Hi, Facebookers. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi, Brody. Why are you looking so sad? I don't know if you saw my pajama pants on that one. I didn't even think about it. No, disregard live video, right? <laughs> um, how is it going um, on this beautiful hump day? Here we are, Wednesday already. Um, feels like it came really quickly. Um, hi, Nikki. Hi, Candice. Um, good to see you guys. Hi, Linda. Um, so sometimes if I don't say your name, it's because your name didn't appear in my little feed. And I think it only shows people that I'm Facebook friends with. Um, so if I didn't say your name, I'm not ignoring you by any means. I just don't know that you're watching. Um, so for those folks that are watching, if you, you can uh, drop a quick hello, drop a quick hello, <laughs> get stuck on that one. Um, I'd love to say hi and uh, check in with you and know that you're watching. Hello, Jake. Um, good to see you. Um, I am having a day. Good day. Um, I did a lot of work today. Um, a lot of sitting at the computer, so my eyes are a little crossed. Um, took a long time to actually take a shower this morning. Um, took one just before this, so, you know, regular stuff. Regular pandemic, pandemonium stuff. Um, hi, Christy. Christy, it's so funny. I was thinking of you this morning. Um, I was working out, and I remember what I was doing, but I was like, oh, I got to check in on Christy. Um, I haven't talked to her in a little bit. Hi, Holly. Hi, Cornell. Uh, good to see you guys. Cornell, hope you're staying safe. Um, everyone else out there as well. Um, I have been talking a lot about vulnerability. Here we go with the dogs. There she is. She hears something. <laughs> I've been talking a lot about vulnerability. And um, interestingly enough, one of the readings this morning that I um, went over talks about vulnerability. It's not out of the book I usually read from. It's a different one. Um, and uh, I wanted to share it with you. Hi, Andrea. Good to see you. Um, when we talk about... Um, this sort of idea, these societal kind of um, imposed norms, right, about being strong, um, boys don't cry kind of mindset, right, um, both gender roles as well as just, um, you know, what it means to be strong. Um, we talk about some of what I call like the prejudices, prejudice of man, you know, um, these ways that systemically historically our natural reactions or natural experiences have been sort of stifled and um, we've learned what's right or wrong in terms of our actions by numbing our feelings by pushing them away by not acknowledging uh, these very natural responses to various triggers various stimuli um, and this this concept right of vulnerability is incredibly important, um, not only for our mental health, for our well-being, but for our physical health. Um, stress, depression, anxiety has an impact on our whole system. Um, we keep tension in our shoulders, our stomachs absorb uh, a lot of tension, um, common colds, immunity, right? Things of that, of that sort, even uh, more serious ailments have oftentimes been linked to stress and depression. And, um, you know, a lot of that, a lot of that has to do with kind of depression being turned inward, not allowing ourselves to feel what we're feeling, to actually experience our emotions. Um, I know myself included, you know, and I feel anxious and friends as well. When I have anxiety, I do everything in our power to get away from it, to avoid feeling it, to stop the feeling, right? Where... We've worked so hard running from it, um, where the answer is to walk through it. And I really liked, I'm going to share this reading with you guys, uh, May 6th, um, because it talks to, it mentions a lot of things that I wanted to talk about. And uh, hi, Brian. Hi, Casey. Good to see you guys. Brian's one of my um, like inspirations for 
the principles I want to live my life by. He's just an incredible individual. He has a very bright aura. Um, his energy is just amazing. Um, so I know he does he does the daily meditations at 11, but if you haven't met him, when we open up, please, please, please stop by. Saturdays at 9 a.m., he runs the best boot camp ever. Um, not even being biased, I think we should nominate him for best something of Rochester. <laughs> Hi, Patrick. Good to see you. All right. So May 6th. I stand before you as a tower of strength, the weight of the world on my shoulders. As you pass through my life, look, but not too close, for I fear I will expose the vulnerable me. By Deirdre Sarlt. Vulnerability is as much a part of being human as is strength. Our vulnerability prevents our strength from becoming hard, brittle, self-serving. Our soft edges invite others' openness and their expression of love. Um, so our soft edges is what is inviting, right? Um, those soft expressions of love, our openness, that attracts people to us. Um, that kind of fills our heart and fills other people's heart. It's not how stoic and strong we are, right? Um, stoic and... Um, unaffected are, um, and Brene Brown talks about this, almost like characteristics of um, cowardly behavior um, because it's, it's so hard, right? It's so much harder to be vulnerable with other people. Um, it's a lot easier to shut the world out, to close that door to emotion, to real connection. Um, um, so we learned long ago to be strong. We were encouraged to need no help, to need nobody. Now we struggle to ask for help. As we grow an understanding of our human needs and as we become more aware of the spiritual help available, the difficulty of reaching out to others is eased. I don't know about you guys, but it's just, I don't know where it comes from, but it's been ingrained in my mind to not ask for help, to not talk to anyone about my problems, um, to be sort of this shut-in. You know, even when um, I first decided to be public about my recovery, there was so much shame. You know, it was a kind of decision I, I spent a lot of time um, thinking about and even checking with my family. And, you know, my folks, they've never experienced addiction in their um in their lives, you know, it doesn't run in my family. And they were really concerned. Um, they didn't want that stigma. Um, they didn't, it was a sign of weakness, a moral failing, right? And th those are just some of the old ideas. They're not bad ideas. They're ideas that we are working so hard to challenge um, because historically addiction has been viewed so poorly, you know, but with time, with awareness, with education, with people speaking up and saying, hey, I'm in recovery and hey, I'm normal in every way. I have a disease. We're able to shatter some of those old ideas and that stigma that it's not a moral failing. Um, it's not a matter of willpower, right? Um, I didn't grow up um, aspiring to be addicted to drugs and alcohol. Um, I didn't grow up wanting to have substance use disorder. If I was able to, if I had like the power to stop myself from nearly throwing my whole life away, from nearly becoming homeless, from, you know, losing anything and everything that mattered, I probably would have chose the better way, right? But my disease really took over my thinking. It took over my mind. It changed the neural pathways. So my responses were um, not in line with what my values and my morals um, are, right? Um, Brian, one of the kindest words, our prayer, we can say is help. And help is such a magical word. Um, when we ask for help, uh, we're actually not just helping ourselves, we're helping other people around us, you know? So if you think of it as like an act of service, um, people want to help. People around you want to help, right? Like, I want to help you guys in any way I can. And I'm sure, um, and many of you have shown up for me as well. You know, you guys want to help. And if you think about it, when people ask for help, how eager are you to jump in and, and support them and love them, right? Um, 
so why is it different when you're the one asking for help? Um, let me see, Holly. It is truly exhausting always being the strong one. I'm learning how to open up, be softer, allow myself to ask for help. That's so huge. It's a lot of work to um, show the perception or, or the um, seemingly, right, be the strong one. And the definition of strong is so, um, I don't know, varied, I guess, right? Um, being the strong one, quote unquote, um, the one that people come to, um, you know, um, I've said this before, like check on your strong ones, you know, we hurt too. Um, and when I say we, I mean each and every one of you, you know, we're all strong. Uh, we're no less or more strong than, than the other person. Um, everybody has had life experiences that have made them stronger, that have helped them grow. Um, let's see. No longer need we look to pills, booze, food, or lovers for strength. All the strength we've ever needed is as close as our thoughts. At this moment, we are a tower of strength, not one weighed with burdens. How about that? All right, we're all strong. We are towers of strength. I don't know about you guys, but I can picture an actual tower, and I can picture strength, um, as like this beautiful tower that I'm kind of a part of. You know, I think about the Titanic, um, obviously before the crash, but when uh, Leonardo DiCaprio was like on the the edge of the ship with his arms spread open. Um, and that is like this tower of strength. Um, and it's not being weighted down with burden. Um, it's the beauty of like our own inner strength. Rather, our strength is a gift of our connection to a spiritual power that can free us from all the troubles we shoulder. And spirituality is very um, unique for everyone. Um, I talk a lot about meditation. I talk a lot about intuitive thought, that inner voice inside you. Um, addiction clouded any kind of intuitive thought. Um, it clouded my conscience. So now, you know, in recovery, I'm able to tap into this this kind of voice or this source of power um, that I have, right? Tap into like my innate power that I never knew about um, and that each and every one of you guys has. We all have it. You know, all humans have this ability. Um, all of our vulnerable selves will open our souls to the flood of strength just waiting for our prayers our vulnerable selves. Um, that makes me smile. It's such a strong statement. Um, it, it feels like the shame of vulnerability, right? The um, seeming shame of vulnerability is taken away. Um, when we think about our vulnerable selves, our, you know, what are other words for vulnerable? Genuine, sincere. Um, they're not shameful words. They're really empowering words. I want genuine friendships and genuine relationships. Um, and in order to, to have those, I have to be vulnerable. I have to be genuine, right? And without vulnerability, it's, what is it really? Without asking for help, where's that connection? You know, um, I was on the phone today, I called my exterminator. It's a whole separate, separate conversation I'm struggling to cope with. Um, and um, he and the people answered the phone. They're like, hey, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm good. How are you? I didn't really even wait for a response. I just started talking. And as I started talking, he said, wow, thanks so much for asking. And I had to take a pause. Um, and that genuine connection, right? We throw this out. How are you doing? Good. How are you? And just keep it moving. And you don't even, a lot of times, I don't. people don't even listen for the response. They don't listen for what the other person's going to say. It's just like this thing you say. And it's lost its entire connection. It's lost the vulnerability. It's lost the preciousness of that moment, that true human connection. Um, and it's through vulnerability because where does the conversation go when I say I'm good and you, it's done, it's over, right? You could try to like dig deeper, but it's not, um, that exchange of energy. It's not this free flowing, um, conversation that leads to these powerful human connections and powerful experiences. Um, let's see. 
So it ends with, I will be as strong as I need to be when I tap the spiritual source that awaits my call. I will risk my vulnerable self today. Vulnerability is taking a risk, you know, and, and we do have to be mindful of who we're vulnerable with because not everyone um, um, deserves our vulnerability, I guess. You know, there's some people um, that may, um, I don't know, it's best, that may be not the safest people for us. You know, um, so I wouldn't go out there and just like shout at Walmart all my deepest, darkest emotional <laughs> secrets and problems and whatever. Um, but I would um, share my my thoughts and my experiences with my circle of friends, right? With you guys. I mean, I guess it's sort of technically the same, right? Because this isn't Walmart, but this is live and it could go anywhere. Um, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> um, so really this asking for help. Um, I just got off the, fall, the, the call. I just got off the phone um, before uh, this Facebook Live. And we were talking about that, like asking for help and how it really does allow other people, right? We invite other people into our lives. We give other people um, purpose and meaning when we ask for help. Isn't that an interesting concept? You know, um, I know when my friends ask for help or someone asks for help, I'm so excited um, because I can contribute. I can, I can maybe make their day a little bit brighter, whatever it may be. Um, but I struggle asking for help because I don't want to be a burden, because I don't want to seem weak. Right, and especially in this time, really any time. I know we always say especially now, especially now, but really any time. Um, asking the, for help is the way to vulnerability, which is the way to courage, which is the way to true connection. Um, so it's really a very empowering um, tool uh, when we ask for help from others. So um, if you're out there and you're feeling kind of sad or you feel like you want to talk or you need some help with something, um, it could be something pragmatic, it could be something you know, internal, whatever it may be. Um, I'm definitely here for you. I know there are a lot of other people um, just on this live feed that are here for you as well and are um, super eager and excited to help. Um, we are in this together and we're going to get through this together. And it's always um, really uh, great to be here, <laughs> to be able to share my random thoughts and these readings or reflections. Um, I'm, uh, I appreciate it very much. You know, a lot of reflecting, thinking back to, I don't know, old ways, old ideas, um, whatever it may be. I always think about what life was like in active addiction, right? And what life is like now. And I also think about um, what life is like for folks that are in active addiction um, today and how um, hard it is for them, and how um, connection, right? What kind of connections, what kind of outreach? Um, how can we best help them? How can we best serve them? I don't know, um, it's all kind of deep thoughts, um, not always having solutions or answers, right? But it's important to think about. Um, you know, we are, as a society, responsible to, to help um, the most vulnerable among us. And uh, I don't know, what are we doing to be part of the solution, to be part of the help for them, you know? And just random um, thoughts for the evening, for the day. Uh, Jake wrote, being vulnerable and having humility is something that I really focus on. It's really empowering to look back and look at a situation that deeply affected me in a negative way and look at it as a positive lesson learned. I'm not a mis I'm not mistakes. I'm not a mistake. And being open and honest for me has really allowed me to just learn so much more about myself. And at the same time, it can help me make people feel open to opening up. Yeah, we we really do lead by example, right? Um, people come to us and they see us and they view us 
Um, and if we have the positive energy, if we lead by example, we have the power to change lives. You know, you don't have to um, start a nonprofit or do whatever to change lives. You yourself in this very moment um, can change lives and you are changing lives just by the interaction, just by reaching out to someone, just, be, just by being open um, to doing things maybe a little bit differently or thinking a little bit differently. Um, you are contributing to like this greater solution of humanity, you know, I like to think in very um, large kind of terms. Hey, Keisha. Um, I see you joined us too. Good to see you. And Karen's on. Sabrina, hi. Um, Meredith. Hey. This may be my cue because I think someone there, someone's there and they're going to keep barking. I'm having a hard time with words today. Um, have a great night, guys. Um, think about how you can um, contribute to to helping and to the solution, um, I don't know, to solve the world, all the world's problems, right? I like to be super dramatic. <laughs> Have a great night. It's been good chatting with everyone, and I will see you tomorrow night. Bye.